Hello grade eights and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud. I hope that you've all had an amazing day or morning and that you're excited to learn. This is grade eight English. If you have a question during the lesson, please send an email with your question to grade eight at worksheetcloud.com. Hello again, I'm Mrs. Goslett and I will be teaching you today. I hope that you are excited to learn and you're most welcome to grab a pen and paper to jot down some new information or maybe just revision. Maybe you've learned this and now you are revising for later on for the year. Direct and reported speech. Now, some of my learners like to use this, or you guys like to use this when you're writing an essay. Now, if you're an avid reader, you will notice that authors or you know, narrators or people who are writing the story tend to use direct speech. So we kind of get into the mind of the person who's speaking. Or they just want us to feel that immediate actual response from person to person. Now it's not necessary to do this in creative writing. It's fine if you want to do it now and then, but I feel that if you are going to use it, then it is of vital importance that you get it right. We also test this in your language exam. We usually say change this from direct speech to indirect speech. Let's have a look at it. Let me just move myself here. So the first word within the quotation marks always begins with a capital letter. Okay, so that's an important rule to remember. Before you open or close quotation marks, you always have a punctuation mark. So let's look at it. Mary said, comma, open, quotation marks, and here's the capital letter. So you see there, it is cold today. Full stop, close, inverted commas, or quotation marks. So we can see that Mary's talking about the weather. It is actually quite apt because it's quite cold today, although I'm wearing a t-shirt. So let's look at now Mary asking a question. Mary asked, comma, open inverted commas or quotation marks, quotation because the person is actually speaking it. Is it cold today? Question mark, close, quotation marks. Now we're going to look at it from the other way around. Okay, so now it says, it is cold today, comma, close inverted commas, Mary said. This is a bit more challenging to remember because you've got to remember the comma, and then you've got to close, and then you've got to say, Mary said. I find that a lot of people in their essay writing will quote this, but they won't say, Mary said. Now you have to indicate who is talking. So that's very important. When you change direct speech to reported speech or indirect speech, no inverted commas, so we're taking them away or quotation marks. No question mark or exclamation mark. Use, you must use words to describe this. So for example, um, if you're confused, you'll say, um, Adrian confusedly asked, or something like that. Adrian excited, responded excitedly, or something like that. But we'll see now. Um, capital letters become small letters, unless, of course, it's a proper noun. Then you'll keep it. Okay, oopsie. It's not working with me today. I'm just trying to move myself. <laughs> Okay, so you can see the example, and my mouse is not working. Ah, oh, sorry, grade eights. Mother asked, comma, 
see how John is a proper noun. He needs a capital, but remember it will always start with a capital. John, are you coming home? Question mark, close quotation marks. Now we're changing direct speech into indirect or reported. So we keep mother asked and we take away the comma and we say mother asked John if he was coming home. So you usually would be instructed start the sentence with mother asked then you have to fill in the rest so you would get a mark for if he was because can you see here are you coming home question mark the asked and the if shows that it's a question don't know where to go here so pronouns change to ensure that the meaning of the sentence doesn't change. So mother said, comma, my family and I are going to Bloemfontein today. Mother said that she, so you're changing the pronouns, you can't say mother said that my, no, we're flipping it, so she and her family, see how it's changed, would be going to Bloemfontein that day. So you can see how complex it's going to get, especially if there's a today. You can't keep it. It's got to go a step back. Introductory word plus that. Now this is so important. Most of the time in your tester exam, they will say, start the sentence with, mother said, Sometimes they give you that, sometimes they don't. But you always have to include it. And what I always tell my learners, to look at what they're showing, look at that, look at the word said. Said is in what tense? Past. That's why you have to change it. If it was mother says, then it's going to be in present. Okay, so let's look at, this is the introductory verb said that so you're going to always add that she and her family would be going to Bloemfontein that day question words that's what I spoke about if insert the words if or whether after questions using question verbs so if it says mother asked then you know there's a question you must insert if if it's just always easier to remember, shorter, and it's easy to spell. Many people struggle to spell weather and the weather outside, but hopefully you know how to do it. You can also include inquired or questioned. So mother asked, okay, this is in direct speech. Are all the debaters going to Bloemfontein? So we can clearly see that's a question. But now when we change it, we're going to go mother asked if. If it was not a question, we would have mother said because it would have been a statement. She would have just said something. So we would have had the introductory verb said and we would have included that. But now because it's a question, we're saying mother asked and we have to say if. Or whether. If all the debaters were going to Bloemfontein. Adverbs of place and time. So this is something you must study or remember or learn. For example, in that previous example, we changed today to that day. Tomorrow changes to the next or following morning. Yesterday changes to the day before or the previous day. Now changes to then. At this moment, at that moment, ago, before. Next week, the following week, last month, the month before. This, that, here, there. A lot of the times, especially in grade 8, 
they don't really they're looking for more of a pronoun changing like he and then the actual tense to was so it's important to know this definitely but it is a lot more challenging so i think in your exercises in class you'll definitely go through this rule the following words are also changed this to that these to those here to there okay that's just something for you to remember oh i do apologize for the poor, uh, poor, qual the poor quality oh goodness please forgive me it's one of those days if you are reporting a statement remember i said they use said and then you use that just keep it simple just stick with said if it's a question always just stick with asked it's just easier if there's a command then you're gonna to have to look at what is going on there advised is not it's more like a friendly reminder insisted is there's no choice you have to do it ordered that's normally when your mommy or dad or someone is very cross that you haven't tidied your room up and they're gonna order you to clean it up immediately or they can instruct you the first time then they're gonna order you the next time then an exclamation so you can say exclaimed it's quite an easy one just to remember or shouted or rejoiced depending on what but nine times out of ten I've seen that it's normally a statement when reporting the word please you can use the phrase politely asked so let's look at um, just breaking it down for you Peter says I am happy so it's present tense tense used by the speaker remains the same so because we've got says here remember I said this is your indicator what tense it's going to be so this is showing us and there's our that Peter says that he is happy if it was said you would have to change it to the past tense that he was happy and what do we mark he and is so we're looking for that pronoun change and the tense change we usually say Peter said and you guys get tricked because you just read here and you say Peter says that he is happy here we go past tense this is what I was talking about Peter said that he was happy simple then look at it here it's in past tense but whenever you are changing it it's got to go step back Peter said I was happy so later past tense we're going to report back Peter said that he had been happy there's your two marks this is a little bit more tricky okay so now it's your turn to try um, your hands at it I've got an activity um, for you to do at the end let's just recap and see if you remember what is direct and indirect speech or it can be also called reported it's always um, good to know because in a tester exam this is a guaranteed two marks so if you can just tell me now you don't have to put your hands up don't worry what is the main goal here do you know or if you can just explain it to me I'm listening okay so we are looking at changing someone's direct spoken words for example we'll go back Peter said I am happy we need to change that we always get rid of the quotation marks yes and then we write Peter said that he was happy so you can see there are no quotation marks I have never seen them ask you um, to change reported or indirect speech into direct speech and I think that's why we tend to be better at changing direct speech into indirect so it's important to note that when you are writing 
creatively or writing an essay that you use these rules that I've showed you and you are most welcome to watch this video again or just pause it, write down a few notes and just get it right. Make a note, where do I use the comma? It's always then open quotation marks and then followed by a capital letter. So many people struggle with just this beginning part, the comma and the um, capital letter. So I hope that I've taught you something new or that I've refreshed your memory and that you can get writing direct speech correctly and that you are an expert now at changing it from direct to reported speech. Then, um, as I said, there'll be an activity for you to do after this. I'd love it for you to just give it a try. And then we always end off with, I always say a little bit of motivation, but let's, let's call it a quote of the day. Oh dear, there we go. So I've got here, ask yourself if what you're doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. I think you're still young and you're not really sure where or what you want to be and that's okay. And at school at the moment or even at home, you're taking many subjects. There's nothing better than when you find your passion or you find what you're good at and you just dive right into it. I find many of my learners flourish and do so well in grade 10 because they get to choose their subjects. I hope you will forever love English because you don't get to choose it, but I do sincerely hope that you will take this quote into consideration and whatever your passion is, do more of it because it's going to help you get to the place that you want to be. And if you don't know that place yet, then that's okay. You're allowed to experiment and try new skills and this is the best time to do it. I hope I've inspired you a little bit today and thank you so much for being with me and hopefully learning something. This lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I'm Mrs. Goslett. Goodbye.